cold, sometimes the flies actually get stuck there and, and they will die. Um, you know, normally with smaller flies, they don't have the, uh, enough strength to free themselves, so very unfortunate for the risk. So I, I guess that's all for the uh, photographs and video. Um, the conclusion is, um, among the 900 over species of orchids that can be found here, so far I've only observed about 40 species. That is just a small fraction of information which um, I think requires more direct observations. Um, uh, much better if you can have uh, photographs or, or video as uh, evidence because all these information are, are vital for pollination biology studies, uh, plant insect interaction, or even co evolution studies. Um, and with those information, we can uh, uh, come up with uh, conservation strategies to uh, conserve the orchids as well as the uh, pollinators. So I would like to acknowledge the uh, following people who have kindly help me whether in terms of uh, orchids identification or in insect identification. People who have allowed me to access uh, to their orchid collection and of course to uh, Forest Research Institute for uh, believing in me in, and, and giving me the opportunity to be here. And before I end my talk, um, I have quite a lot of my pollination photographs uh, available in my newly published <coughs> Wild Orchids of Peninsula Malaysia book as well. So um, if you are interested, we have about 19 copies here. Uh, Dr. Ruth Q is kind enough to give you a very special prize at a 130 million copy. And I'll be happy to sign the book if you want. Thank you very much. Okay. If you have any questions, I'll, I'll try my best. Okay, Q&A session. Just now you mentioned that there are some species which are pollinated by more than one species of insect. Yep. Would there be insects that only go for one species, the other way around? You know, one insect only go for one particular flower? or are uh, insects well, not in, specific? In, in Europe, they seem to be very specific where you have uh, just one bee species pollinating one of its species. As far as my observation is concerned, uh, they don't seem that way. Sometimes one orchid can attract up to 10 or more uh, insect species. But of course, it depends on whether the uh, insect has got the right size and the right way to trigger the mechanism. And if they can do that, they are the pollinators. They, they can be the pollinators. It's the physiology of the insect that's the determinant. Yeah, so long as you know they can trigger the mechanism, they can remove the pollinium, they can also deposit the pollinium. So, yeah. Can uh, from your videos and photos today, uh, most of the pollinators that you captured were flies. Um, is, is it to say that majority of the orchids in Malaysia are pollinated by flies or it just happened that you captured, uh, the, the flies are easier to capture? Um, well, this, this is the uh, thing that I was saying that you know, out of the uh, 900 species of orchids, We've only seen about 40 species pollinated by bees and flies. Uh, it just so happened that you know I'm actually getting more uh, observations on fly pollination rather than bee pollination or even the moth or butterfly pollination. So we don't know um, whether these uh, majority groups are fly pollinated or bee pollinated or butterfly pollinated. So we, we really need more observation to find out more. But um, you can actually more or less guess by looking at certain flowers and tell whether these 
orchids are fly pollinated or bee pollinated or butterfly or moth pollinated uh, just based on morphology. You can you can guess, but you know uh, sometimes you may be wrong. Say for example, um, bee pollinated flowers usually you see like the dendrobium chromatum, which is white, and then you have um, yellow lip. Uh, bees normally have nectar guide, they call it the nectar guide. And they normally have um, landing pad. <laughs> the lip is always a landing pad for mm, it. Like a helicopter landing yeah. pad, yeah. So bees usually go for nectar and you usually find nectar at the base of the lip. Whereas for fly pollinated flowers, um, as you have seen the uh, Balbozulum lasiantum for example, um, very dark grey, uh, mimicking maybe like flesh and the smell of food. Um, those are fly pollinated ones. And then you have sometimes orchids with very long spur. Uh, usually those are butterfly or moth pollinated because only with their long proboscis, you know, they can actually penetrate and get the nectar from the long spur. Um, so that that is some of the signs you know, where you, you can actually tell whether that particular orchid is pollinated by bees, flies or butterfly or moth. So what pollinate slipper orchids? Uh, slipper orchids, they are pollinated by flies actually. Um, but uh, in a recent presentation by a scientist in, in, uh, from, from China, he actually found out that slipper orchid can be pollinated by bees as well. Uh, so I guess that is something new. Um, previously, there were quite a few studies done in Thailand. They always find surfeit flies as pollinated. And the flying pollinated ones always smell? Um, I think some of the orchids, they produce the scent, but the human nose can't really pick up. So actually they are scent. What about the species? Cattleya species are pollinated by bees, but uh, we hardly see them happening here because Cattleya is a non-native orchid to Malaysia. Is there any evidence to show that uh, orchids might be wind pollinated? No. Orchids are definitely not wind pollinated. They are either insect pollinated or they are self pollinated. So the moral of the story for orchid growers, especially amateur orchid growers, is don't use pesticides. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of them, especially for um, the horticulture trade, they would actually prefer not to have insects coming to their flowers. So they had pollinate so that the, the pollinia will be intact. You see what happened is that um, orchid flowers, when you have the pollinia in this lodge, the flower will wilt very quickly. So, growers so it's, it's served its purpose, yes, it were. Yeah, so yeah. they don't want that to happen, especially if somebody wants to send their plant for orchid show, you know, for competition, they don't want insects to remove their pollinia. So sometimes you see orchid growers actually covering the whole plant with net, you know. That's the whole whole idea, you know, preventing insects from removing the pollinia. Let's keep the orchid virgins. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them will be stuck on the head, 
about the you know trying to probe for nectar and waste. Uh, sometimes the pollinia is also being attached to the proboscis. This uh, pollinia, at my knowledge of uh, as far as I know, the bees go in and they, they get the feet uh, stuck with the pollen and they put another flower. The flies we talked about, they go for the pollinia. Is that sweet? Is that sort of nectar as well? And then, is that food for them? And if they lose it, do they go to the next one and do they bring it to the nest for? No, no. Um, first of all, uh, orchids are very special. Um, pollen are compressed into pollinium. You know, unlike other flowers, you have pollinium, I mean pollen, where you say, you know, it is attached to the whole body. But, but for, for orchids, the pollen are actually compressed into uh, pollinium, where you see it's attached to the back. That is it hard? That it's is hard. It's solid. So they don't actually go for pollinium. But for bees, they actually go for nectar. For flies, um, we are not sure what they are after. It. It's possibly uh, for food. So they are probably probing for some chemicals on the flower parts. Or not for the pollinium. Not for the pollinium. Because if um, they go for the pollinia, they, they will actually, there, there is a case where bee actually uh, purposely go for the pollinia. So we call that a robber instead. So they, they actually rob the flower of the pollinia. Uh, and I, I presume that it's used for food. But for the ones that I've just shown you, they actually don't go after the pollinia. Um, in fact, the pollinia is attached to the body. Um, Without them actually knowing, you know, that's going to happen. So, what do they go for? so bees will normally go for nectar at the base of the leaf. Uh, flies, we are not sure. Probably chemicals on the flower parts. So the pollinia are basically hitchhikers.